Okay, we can see you. How do you how do you think you look on camera? I need a car seat. <laughs> Don't sit like a baby. Lord. I don't like when people assume that crayons go with my menu. I'm a grown ass man. The kids menu is not something I should be handed when I walk into a fast food or a five star restaurant. I don't like when people assume that the girl I'm with is my older sister. I don't like that shit. Ask first, hey, is this your girl or is that your older sister? Don't just be like, I know you with your little brother and all, but can I get your number? Like, don't little brother zone me. I don't like that shit. I can, you can friend zone me, but don't little brother zone me. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Stand Up Cortez, man, and I'm jumping off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. All right, y'all, so we got Cortez back with us. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Off the porch today. <laughs> Off the porch with it. What up, what up with it? Oh my gosh. Okay, so I, this is really random to ask a question, but do you think that it's true when it comes to women that you can get a girl based, you can get more girls based off your personality than your looks? I kiki key the few girls out they draws. I ain't gonna hold you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I ain't that funny. But no, I think, I think if I got personality and I can make you laugh, we can have fun together. Yeah. I love that. You like that? Love it. I mean, I've been making you laugh, right? <laughs> you have. Already. <laughs> oh okay, so before we get into your career, I do want to take it back a little bit. So I know you're from Chicago. Yes, the south side of Chicago. Talk to us about life for you in Chicago growing up. Chicago is fun. The food is great. The people is amazing. Uh, the women are beautiful, and it's a very real atmosphere. Ain't nothing fake about Chicago. It's real. Like, it's like nobody competes to be better than each other, and everybody look out for one another, despite what, like, people may know or see on TV. Wow. And I know just going a little bit into your background, you were adopted. Yeah. So, so talk to us about that. Okay, so, like, I was taken from birth, right, which is really cool because, like, I had a twin brother. So the, my mom decided to, you know, ad have several kids that she adopted. So she had seven kids that she adopted, and then she had two kids of her own. And uh, I was a favorite. So you said you have a twin brother. I do. His name, Martez. Is he funny, too? No. He's not? <laughs> no. He picked up, like, the weights and stuff. So, like, when people see us, they don't even know, like, he my twin brother. Like, he all, like, muscular, muscly. Yeah. And then, like, he picked up the weights, and I picked up the pencils. <laughs> So like he, he now, built and I'm slinky, like that we are. Really? So are y'all like identical or fraternal? Fraternal mean we don't look alike, right? I think fraternal, yeah, is that y'all don't look alike? Yeah. yeah, we like opposite of like what we look like. Oh, okay, so it's based off the time then. Basically. We fraternal, yeah. Fraternal, oh shit, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, one thing that I loved about you is I was watching your, uh, one of your, how do they, the correct term? One of my stand-up specials, my yes. comedy shows. Yes, your comedy show. And you talked about how your parents taught you early on um, to embrace your biggest flaws. Yeah, yeah. Like, I got to turn my negative flaws into positives, you know? Like, I got a lot of flaws, though. Cause like, but I feel like if, if, if you can get to before somebody else can, you the man. Because, like, <laughs> you can't tell me anything about me that I already don't know. Right, that's very true. Very, very true. What would you say are some of your flaws? Uh, well, besides this condom I got on my head right now, uh, my hair shape. People, people like, they get on my hair shape. Like, I know it's shaped like the thing that they get the baby boogers out with. Like, I know it's shaped like a sucker, a dum dum pop, a two tune, a sock full of nickels. <laughs> I had one kid tell me my hair was shaped like I had a bright idea but never got to use it. Like, that shit crazy. Wow. But outside of my oddly shaped head, my height, I don't like being short. Really? Yeah. I'm I just, sorry. I just don't like being <laughs> short. I feel like, like people look at me and be like, ah, oh, like, is our bodies gonna line up when we lay down? I feel like that's what girls think when they see a short guy. You think so? Yeah, like if we have some sex, like, is he gonna be like down, down, be up here? Or how's that gonna work? Have you ever had to deal with 
that before. No, because I know how to climb trees right very well. I know that's right. <laughs> 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 like, now, okay, so going back to when you say people used to talk about your head shape, when it very first started happening, were you like a little insecure about it? I ain't gonna lie, I tried to play it off. I didn't, I didn't think it was nothing wrong with my head shape at all. I was like, hey, I don't see it. <laughs> like, I don't know what y'all talking about. And then it was like, all right, at certain angles, like from far away, <laughs> it's giving like the PBS logo kids, like the old, old, Not old Not it's one. giving. <laughs> but like, no, nah, now I'm just chilling. Like, I like it, it's cool. If that's what make people remember me, then I have a bunch of bright ideas when you see me, I guess, like. <laughs> Now, um, in school, were you like a class clown? Were you quiet? I was a class clown, but my mom was still strict though. But she told me if I can, if he can, if you can act the ass in class, you gotta be able to prove it on paper. So that made me like be book smart too. Mm -hmm. Like the whole nerd thing. So I'm very smart, but I was goofy. Really? Yeah. Like, Do you have any like crazy school stories? Crazy school stories? Nah. I mean, I got into a few fights. Is that crazy? Uh, uh you was tussling. Yeah, because I play too much. So, like, when somebody say, <laughs> oh, like, people relax. Were, people were fighting you because you was joking around with them. Yeah. Like, I remember I was at the cafeteria and I had hit a kid in the face with a lunch tray because he wanted to, like, he tried to punk me over a seat. And we know ain't no assigned seats in high school, mm -hmm. the lunch cafeteria at least. But I was, jo I was roasting him and his girl was laughing at him and he ain't like that. Oh, yeah, no. So, he, like, he did this little <laughs> shoulder thing. I got scared. Clipped him with the lunch tray, and I, w I woke up after that. That's, that's how it happened. Wow, that's crazy. So that was like the craziest fight that you've been in. Yeah, that was the craziest one I've been in. But I always lose to like people that's like bigger than me. Nobody <laughs> like my size ever want to fight me. And I guess that's just because I have a strong personality and a strong presence. And people might think I'm strong, but nah. <laughs> so like, do you, do you even fight when you're mad? Or are you kind of like the calm one when you fight? I walk away. Like you gotta like you gotta drive me there, but I always think about situations before I put myself in them mm -hmm. because like I got a lot to lose at the end of the day. No, that's very true. So. Now we gotta get into your career. So you've been doing comedy since you were like fourteen. Yeah, mama, we made it. Hey, we off the porch with it. We thugging. <laughs> Do you remember your very? Okay, actually, I want to take it back. So. At 14, how did you kind of know that, like, this is the career that you want to get active in? Uh, my mom took me to a kids' comedy show, actually. It was called Fat Kids Comedy. And it was, like, younger kids actually doing stand-up. And I was watching it, and a host of the show worked for, like, Tyler Perry and all that. And I was a fan. Like, I was like, I was like oh, I know that guy. I want to do that. And then after that show, I went up to the guy, and he was teaching me the fundamentals of stand-up and improv. And then mm -hmm. I actually did one of his shows. Yeah, when I got on stage and people was laughing with me instead of always at me, it was like, all right, I want to do this. Wow. So basically, like, did you just know, like, deep down inside, like, dang, I'm going to end up being a comedian? Nah, I ain't know what I wanted to be. Really? Yeah. I told, like, I got people, like, my school counselors used to laugh at me because I didn't want to go to college and all that stuff. Really? Yeah, they was like, what you, you, you smart, you doing applications? Like, what do you want to be? And I was like, I want to be a comedian. They was like, well... What else? There's no school for that. And I'm just like, comedy, you know? So um, when you did your very first, like, performance, how was that? Like, did you, were you really nervous? Oh, I bombed. <laughs> really? I was like, mm. uh, I wrote everything on my hand. And then my hand got real sweaty and everything was like mushed off. Oh my God, did you freak out? Nah, I, I tried to keep reading. I was like. <laughs> They knew what was up though, but I knew I'd get better in time. And then when I got better and started memorizing everything, I was, I was good from there. So, okay, you said you bombed it. Was there a point where you, in your head, you was like, oh my God, shit, like I'm really fucking up right now. Nah, I told myself, well, they gonna laugh at me regardless. And this, it is comedy. So <laughs> either laugh while I figure it out or laugh at what I'm trying to remember or laugh at what I wrote down or laugh at whatever jokes I got. But nah, I ain't feel bad about it. Now, with your journey at, with your journey becoming a comedian, what did that look like for you? Uh, millions of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't gonna hold you. No, it, uh, validation. People, people wanting to hang out with me. People embracing me outside of what they just see. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what it looked like for me. I don't know where it's gonna take me yet. Hopefully, off the porch, right? 
you on the porch right now. Oh, thank you. I'm jumping <laughs> off the porch and going north. <laughs> Oh my gosh, now I've, I'm always curious with the grind of like being a comedian because that's not, that ain't no Yeah, joke. it's not easy. You're gonna hear a lot of no's and yeses. People book who they, who they think is funny people, but nowadays people book who they think it has the most followers. People book who they feel like is killing it on social media and not actually doing stand up. So people don't really know that I've been doing stand up at 14. They just think, oh, wild and out, or they just think, oh, class clown. They don't necessarily understand that I was actively act, actively doing it so it's definitely hard and there's no like a I don't clock in for nobody I have to hope that somebody see me performing and book me right. and there's days where I kill a show and nobody come up to me to book me for anything and there's days where I do I right. people say hey I want to get you for this event and that's how it works but do you feel um, like, you know, the wave of social media comedians, do you feel like that has kind of affected the art of being a real comedian? Yes, because I'm both of them. I like, I do the Instagram stuff. I do crazy mm -hmm. stuff on social media. And then I still do do stand up and people don't know what it is I do. And then people will say he blew up on TV first and now he's doing a stand up world or he blew up on social media first and now he's doing a stand up world. But I definitely commend anybody or it don't matter if they're a rapper or actor, I commend any and everybody who's actively using social media as a platform to get ahead. So I'm not mad at nobody for that. I feel that. Now, as a comedian, what do you consider a bad crowd? When people act like they ain't there to laugh. Like, I think sometimes people step out to make fun and watch people fail instead of actively laugh. When people feel like that they're the only ones going through something. I think that makes a terrible crowd. When people are not there to listen, they're there to see one person and then anybody else is just there. I think that makes a terrible crowd. And when people talk during my shows. Oh God, I can, I know that probably gets. Yeah, that, that kills me because I have all the power because I have the microphone, but it's the people that's not comedians. That's the funniest people ever. Like I remember I was doing a show and I bombed and the guy was like, all right, if y'all need me, I'm be in the parking lot getting some head, let's go baby. And I was like, ah, but people laughed at that. And I was like, dang, was it that bad? Must be, wow. must be nice, you know? But, so as a comedian, do y'all have like different crowds? Like, well, not crowds, but like, basically, how would you describe your audience? I don't know. I think people look at me and they be like, who's this little kid? Did he need a permission slip to get in this club? <laughs> what is he about to talk about? Can he really relate to me? It's different styles of comedy, yeah, but I don't know. How would you describe your style? Uh, I do a lot of self-deprecational humor. Um, I do a lot. I, I used to be a clean comic, and then now I'm like, all right, he's cussing. He's getting a little bit more aggressive. Um, but I don't have a set style. I'm all around comedian. I go fast. I go slow. I do a bunch of one-liners. I incorporate music within my sets. I do, a, I do it all, so I don't really have a style. Okay, this is my first time hearing clean comedian. I've never heard that before. Well, when I was 14, my mom's and dad's was coming to my events. So like, I couldn't be like, I know this fat bitch who, I can't do that. <laughs> so I had to do, you know, the mommy this, the daddy uh -huh. this, the kids mean you this. Uh, you know, it wasn't more so curse, curse word filled. And then now I can curse, I have a little bit more freedom. I'm not vulgar, but I can relate to adult people's adult things and adult situations because I'm experienced now. Right. I love that. So whenever you, um, so whenever you transition from being like, you know, the clean comedian, was it kind of, oh, well, did you have to get used to basically like cussing and stuff? No, I got mad. I did a strip club one time and I got real <laughs> upset because the good comedians who was cursing and all that was bombing and I knew I shouldn't have been there. So I went out there, I was like, what the fuck y'all looking at? Like, what, I think I, I need permission slip to get in here and I don't appreciate the damn security guard searching me like I'm some type of hoodlum. Oh, talking about some what you got in your pockets. <laughs> it's fruit snacks, niggas, damn. Like, so I think when I'm loud and I'm aggressive and I'm angry with the adults, mm -hmm. it's funnier compared to if I do a church, I can be calm, I can be pure and they'll still listen because that's not what they're always about. But. Now, as a comedian, how do you keep the attention span of people? I have no idea. You, uh... I've had people get up and leave. I had people stay. Um, but I would say just analyzing the crowd and trying to relate, crowd work. Ask somebody who's watching you a question, you know? Analyze who, who's been doing the same shit all day. And I just go off of that. 
But obviously it'll be what, what I wrote down too. If my preference is stronger, y'all ever seen a homeless person? We all seen homeless people. So as long as I'm talking about what it is that we see every day, then I think I'm good. Right. Do you have an embarrassing moment? I got a class photo out with my shoes on the wrong feet. <laughs> I don't know if that's embarrassing or not. <laughs> um, really? Uh, I came fast before. I don't know if that's an I don't know if that's an embarrassing moment or not. I mean, yeah, uh, it is. <laughs> I cheated on the open book quiz. I mean, I don't know if that's <laughs> an embarrassing moment or not. I, uh, I had, I got a cock thigh. I got a real bad cock thigh. And one time I was doing stand up, and somebody was saying something to me. And I was yelling at the person who I thought was saying it, but my eye was looking at the wrong person. And oh he was like, yo, I ain't even say nothing. I'm in the front row. And then the guy at the show was like, yeah, I'm in the back, asshole. And I was like, ah, that was pretty embarrassing. <laughs> oh my <laughs> like, you know, oh my God. I like embarrassing moments. <laughs> now, I want to ask you, how did you really get your buzz as a comedian? How did I get my buzz? Wilding mm -hmm. out. So. Like, I mean, I've been doing skits with other, with other public influencers, but I think while and now, and that gave me enough buzz or exposure to be able to be seen and recognized and stuff. And I wanna ask you, how did that opportunity even come about for you? Well, I was doing uh, open mics at a club for a long time, and then mm -hmm. the owner of the comedy theater actually called me down to audition. But I ain't have to sell my virginity like everybody else did. I'm thugging, <laughs> I was funny. <laughs> But uh, it was a cool audition. Nick Cannon was actually there, and most of the time they don't be there. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I did Apollo and America's Got Talent, and those judges who you are seeing on the actual TV show, they don't be in the audition room. So Nick Cannon was there, DJ Direct was there, and it was dope. Did you feel any pressure going in there? Absolutely. I had 2,113 followers, and they didn't have none of my paperwork. And they was like, why are you here? Who are you? And I was trying to act like I was the funniest kid in the room, and I didn't know that compared to everybody else who actually like work to audition to audition, you know? So I was definitely nervous, but I had confidence. Dang, that's, I'm sorry. I would have probably folded. I would have been like, uh, I was scared. I'm he out. was like, he was like, who is you? I don't got none of your information. And he said it just like that. Yeah. He was like, I don't, I don't know who you are. I was like, oh, I'm Cortez. <laughs> and that didn't help. Really? <laughs> that didn't help at all. I was like, oh, he just, they just told me to come in here. So what was the skit that you, do you remember the skit that you told during the audition? So what they do is we have an audition, then we have a workshop. Mm -hmm. So for the audition, I had to do a Let Me Holler. I had to freestyle rap and I had to do three minutes of stand-up comedy. Keep in mind, they didn't know I was already doing stand-up. So I had that in the back. It was the freestyle rap that was a little shaky. <laughs> and then it was my Let Me Holler. My Let Me Holler was, um, say, sweetheart, you ever been with a man who you can file on your taxes and breastfeed at the same time? I'm a man with benefits, baby. And I had walked around the microphone as if she was tall because I look like a kid. So I don't know if they was laughing with me or at me, but I got the call back. <laughs> you, right. You definitely got the call back. Wow. So after your, after your audition, what were your feelings when it came to your performance? After my audition, I actually stayed to everybody leave because I wanted a picture. Uh, and Nick was leaving and he, dropped in the, he jumped in this black Escalade. And he was like, I know you out here, Cortez, because you want a picture with me, but I got a flight to catch. And I was like, he know my name. Because <laughs> I was with my homeboy who I auditioned with too. Um, but I got the call back the same day. Mm -hmm. It was at 345. It was just leaving because it's a call back. It's an audition. It's a call back the same day. Uh -huh. And then it's a seven day workshop that you got to go through after that. And they can send you home and get rid of you within a seven days as well. So. Oh, so they be like watching you during the workshop. Yeah. So seven day oh. workshop. They put you in a hotel for about a, a month or so. And then you wake up every day at like mm, eight o'clock in the morning, all the way to like 6 p.m. And you just rapping and improv and jokes for a bunch of cameras and white people and Nile and Nick Ooh. and all these producers. And they can send you home whenever they feel like it. So it's like pressure that seven days. Yeah, 28 people uh, in the Atlanta audition. Eight people got the call back. Six people made it to the show. And it's only two of us who are actively like represent for ATL on that show now. Wow. So how do you feel like in this moment? I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. <That> <laughs> no, I'm joking. I feel good. I'm proud of myself. Mm -hmm. 
you know. Um, hopefully, Wild and Out can prompt me into other TV shows, but I'm just milk it till I can, till you send me home. <laughs> I got one to go to. Right. <laughs> What's your favorite Wild and Out moment? Uh, my favorite Wild and Out moment. Oh, I got a lot of them because this stuff still left the air, actually. Oh, shoot. My favorite wild and out moment was when I told Conceited to shut up. <laughs> no, shut up! Like, that was my, my favorite wild and out moment. What people don't know is I wasn't doing the best. And the producer came up to me and he was like, You got to get out there or be aggressive or this is going to be your last day. And oh, I was he like, told you that? Yeah, now. Oh, wow. And I was like, They're hogging the mic. They're not letting me go there. And when Conceited cut the beat, I just started yelling. And y'all fucked with it, so thank you. Y'all saved my life. Y'all saved my job. Because everywhere I go, they'd be like, no, shut up. I'd be like, yeah, shut up. Wow, so why do you think that he, you know, told you that you got to, like, really get yourself out there? Because on TV, when they are watching it, and you can see me. Like, y'all don't see it watching it, but backstage, they can see me in the back. They can see me looking shy and scared. They can see if you don't have anything to say. They can see if you just waiting to get called out. They can all see that. And they're like, we want somebody who's on go, who's ready, who's prepared. Whether you got something or not, get out there. We don't want to just be giving y'all this opportunity and y'all are too nervous to take it. And I think that's what it was. He was like, I don't want to hear none of that. You ain't getting a mic, everybody else going. When in reality, they was hogging a the mic. I'm telling you, <laughs> they was hogging a the mic. Why not they hog the mic? For real? Yeah, Justina, 20 balls. Khan cut the beat because he can't rap on beat. And then the celebrity always get the bell, it don't matter what he say. I'm like, bro, this is stupid. Let me go. Can I go, please? Are you the youngest cast member? Young Swag is actually the youngest cast member. I think uh, he was actually on the show at 18. I got on the show at 19. So. Oh, wow. You really doing that, though. Like, yeah, I'm cooling. You really doing that. That's awesome. What would you say is like one of the craziest wilding out moments? When I got dropped on stage, that sucked. Oh my God. Yeah, they dropped me. I think I, I did the joke wrong or something like that. And they was like, yeah, we don't want to work with you. Drop. Uh, that sucked. Oh, so like when you say drop, like they fired you. No, no, no. Like I was, they, see, I'm a prop. I'm so tiny. Everybody like to pick me up. Mm -hmm. And they, they always want to utilize me in jokes. And sometimes I take one for the team. But if I come up with a joke and it's not funny, but it requires you picking me up, and that joke don't hit. They just let you go. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so Charlie Clips and Radio Big Mac, I was, I was riding in this, in this little swing, rug and I was, it was supposed to be a swing because we was playing God Props. And the joke then hit. I was like, I got a good one. Just treat the rug like a hammock. I was like, this is going to be funny. Watch this. We went out there and I was like, man, this swing lit as hell. And they eh, dropped. Oh my God, you, yeah. didn't get, you didn't hurt yourself, did Oh you? no, the microphone definitely shot up there. It's a battery <laughs> pack that I had on, eh? It's not good. Oh my God, so what would you say like being on Wild and Out is teaching you? It's teaching you tough skin because just because the cameras on, don't, don't be rolling all the time, don't mean the joke stop. Like I'd be like, that was a good joke, right, E-Man? And he was like, you dress like you're grounded. And I was like, damn, <laughs> I, I thought I made us a moment. I thought we was friends. You know, the jokes still come at you. When you say something and it don't hit, they still take those teams seriously, even though it's every man for themselves. They be like, oh, like I heard oh, conceited, why is he on my team? And, and I'm just like, why did you let me say that? I asked you for a joke. You ain't want to help me out. <laughs> but uh, the jokes is still going. So right. just having tough, tough skin, understanding that politics plays a huge part in it as well. It's not always about who's the funniest. Sometimes it's about who can take the most fat jokes or who's white, you know, or who has the most followers on social media. And when I got into it, I didn't know that. I was crying and writing every day. And I'm like, dang, like I was off because you only get paid for the episodes you're in. Mm -hmm. You don't get paid for all of the episodes. So one season I did 13, my next season I did three. And I didn't understand if it was because I wasn't funny enough or if it was because I wasn't funny enough. And they was like, nah, it's because, you know, celebrities, you got new people. You know, obviously, if you got a million followers, then they get more views. So you have to be able to make sure you're working off camera as well, not just on camera, because they don't care. If Wild and Out fans come to my page and they just run into more Wild and Out fans, it's pointless. But if Wild and Out fans come to my page and my fans go to Wild and Out, then I'm a little bit more valuable to the show. And I didn't know that at first. 
Oh wow! So it seems like when you when you got in there, you had to learn a lot. Like yeah, and they they tried to body bag me too. I would never forget that they was pushing me to go, 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 go. They was I have nothing. They was acting like I was brand new, and I'm like, dang, like Justina is wild style is only a minute. You, <laughs> Twenty eight bars, all about me. I get it. Thank you. <laughs> well, what do you feel was like your coldest bar that you did? I think it's funny you make music, DC. I also think it's pretty funny no one's buying your CDs. When it comes to your career, you should just give it up because your music worse than Justina and Justina music sucks. And then he came back and called me a mosquito. And <laughs> niggas, everywhere I go, <laughs> zzz, 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 zzz. I'm like, come on, I think it's funny. Nobody, DC, CDs, no. Being funnier is sometimes way better than being a rapper on that show. And I think I just so sometimes just stay in my comedic lane instead of trying to be like, hit man, because I'm not a battle rapper, I'm a jokester. So knowing the difference, because you, be, you will get got. <laughs> oh, so do they take, so you said they take the team serious. So like, if your team loses, say your team loses like dang near everything, do they really take that serious when the kids They do. I think everybody wants to get their shine. And when somebody allowed Cortez to tell a joke and it don't hit and you sacrifice your air time to, to let me get something off, it, it, it's like, yo, come on, bro. Like I did a joke to uh, Carlos Miller and Carlos was like, you just really said that in front of all these people while we was rolling. And I was like, yeah, I did. <laughs> you know, and there was one moment where, I don't know if they got the teams mixed up. I don't think they did. I think they made it a good, a good decision. But um, I ended up on the old school team with all of the heavy hitters mm -hmm. and all of the, the new school people and the rookies was, well, I'm still a rookie or whatever, but was on the other team. And it, while airing, Nick Cannon's like, why is Cortez over there? Y'all want to switch? And in my mind, I'm like, please don't make me walk across the stage to the other side because I, I think I'm, I belong on this side with the Ticos and the Carlos and the DCs. You know, mm -hmm. people may say different, but whatever. And I got to prove that in that episode, actually. So I can't wait for y'all to see it. Wow. So with you being like, you know, not the youngest, but being a little young, what are some comments that people be saying? Like, People say I dress like I'm grounded. Uh, I still don't know what that mean. Somebody told me up close, I look far away. I still don't know what that mean. Um, Emmanuel told me I look like my car, cause they had Ferraris and Corvettes when we got to the hotel. And at the time I was driving a 2012 Ford Fiesta, but I wanted to act like a somebody, so I tried to get the valet man to park it. <laughs> and E-Man got out of his Mustang or whatever it was and was like, yeah, you should just park that yourself, my boy. You look just like that car. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, shit. But no, they, um, throughout all those jokes, they still, they help you, you know what I'm saying? They're, mm -hmm. It's tough criticism, but they'll let you know, like, hey, you doing good, keep it up. And now we're going into a phase where they still look out for you. You know, a lot of the times right. they're starting to fall back. And I think they still kind of throwing you in the water a little bit, because it's like, now we used to carry the show. Y'all got it. We, we trying to give y'all more time to shine. So oh, make something yeah. out of it. Oh, wow. So now they like really putting y'all on the forefront. Yeah, I think my last season, E-Man was like, I'm not rapping. Khan was like, I'm not cutting the beat. So if you was brand new, the producers was able to see if you had something. I couldn't use that season, my first season, to say, oh, they not letting me go. I had to use that, utilize that moment. And even the episodes that's airing now, DC is booked and bu busy. Carlos booked and busy. Those guys are slowly but surely fading out. They're not going to be in every episode. So now we got to like. June. Take the initiative, wow. Yeah, take that spot. Oh yeah, you, listen, you gonna be in a lot of stuff soon. Like, this is pure pressure, oh my god. Yeah, it's, it's, it's getting there. <laughs> now you've also, not only um, have you been in Water Now, but you've also been in Kenan Thompson's Ultimate Comedy Experience. So talk about that. Oh yeah, so I got the uh, headline at Jimmy Kimmel's Comedy Club and I got to actually tour with Kenan Thompson and actually host the Kenan Thompson's Ultimate Comedy Experience. And that was lit. It was a comedy competition where they uh, took a young comedian and an older comedian uh, and whoever won those tournaments got the headline in SNL and do some stuff for S Saturday Night Live. And I just got to host both shows. The the adult tour and the kids tour, which was dope. Oh, well, that's awesome. How is Keenan in person? Keenan Thompson is really humble. Uh -huh. um, I'm starting to see that when you're a billionaire, it's okay to dress like a bum. Uh, 
all the greats are doing it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, he's really cool. Right. He, he invited me to his table. He was like, you know, you're just as, you know, um, popular as I am in this atmosphere. And he was teaching me the importance of star power and not being so nervous. Cause I, oh yeah, Kenan Thompson, he's a dope guy, super humble. Um, I think I, uh, I said he was a bum by how he dressed. He makes millions of dollars and he, he dresses like me. So that's really cool. Yeah, Kenan Thompson. You got the cool. Belize's on right They now. heavy as hell. I took these shoes off how layaway are for those? just- I call them like moon boots. Man, I took these off layaway just for this interview and these just heavy. They got on goddamn. 40-pound Benadryl <laughs> pills. They are heavy. They hurt. Don't bomb. Get up. <laughs> Trying to be cool. That's what the hell I get. So, like, walking in those, how do you feel? You can hear me coming. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I want to hear? Like, I want to hear some pickup lines. Like some flirtatious pickup lines? Not flirtatious, but, like, what's, like... Something I tell a girl? Yes. That's flirtatious, right? I mean, no? Yeah. In a sense. You want something like sexual or no, like something dark? Just, I said no. <laughs> we, just anything. Honestly, anything? it don't even matter. Okay. Uh, say, sweetheart, are you a fan of wrestling? Because I'll lay the smack down raw. Uh, <laughs> Baby, you remind me of a Rubik's Cube. Because the longer you play with my toy, the harder it gets. That's really clever. You thought about it, huh? <laughs> Don't steal my shit. Don't steal my shit. Can we? I'm gonna do that on TV. I should have saved it. You should have. Should have saved it. And then if I'm like, if I'm like, if I got nothing, I'd be like, hey, say, sweetheart, I may not have a lot of money, fashy, fancy cars, jewelry, but. I know some real good chicken spots if you want to go half on a 10 piece. Like, that's if you're humble or not. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, can we just hear like two more? <laughs> two more? <laughs> say bitch is what I would say to a, a woman who I felt like I wouldn't treat right or had no respect for, but how you doing, beautiful? Why I feel like you can write poetry or something? See, that's how you, I think I can. Like Erica Badu. <laughs> we are off the porch and we are having a blast. And after I leave this interview, I'm gonna go get me some cash. You are crazy. <laughs> Somebody said ass. Y'all freaky. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> no. What's next for you as a comedian this year? Only fans. Uh oh. I'm Joseph. I don't know, whatever uh, God has in store for me. Uh, you know, my mama is my angel right now. So whatever she takes me, that's where I would go. Put me in a movie, put me in a movie. <laughs> put me in, I do got a movie coming out, Carter Carlot. Um, so that's, that's, no, I'm for real about that. Uh, uh, so that's, that's happening for me. Um, and hopefully other shows and other stand-up specials. Tour, the Can't Cancel Cortez comedy tour is coming soon. So put your name in a hat in my DM. And we'll see where, we, where we can go with it. Oh my. <laughs> you are funny. Thank you, Daddy. Before we wrap up the interview, <laughs> do you have any last words or shout outs? Man, hey, shout out to Off the Porch, man. Shout out to my team. Um, I appreciate each and everybody who's watching this or support me. Uh, don't believe what you see on, on Google. My birthplace is not Area 51. Uh, cash at me at cmacklin35 with a dollar sign in front of it. Follow me on Instagram, because I want followers like everybody else do. Uh, Balenciaga's are a heavy ass shoe. And uh, I'm proud of y'all. If y'all haven't been told this year or any other year, I'm proud of you. It don't matter what you accomplished, what you've done, what you haven't done. I'm proud of you. Dirty bastard, you. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. You, you, my friend. You got something, my buddy. You got something. And I'll tell you one more thing. I'll tell you one more thing. I'll tell you the people, the people who are watching right now. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. 
Oh yes, yeah, subscribe, cause, cause we're gonna make YouTube great again. And it's not gonna be stupid, it's not gonna be dumb. It's not gonna be a bunch of videos me dumping shit on my head like you think. But it's gonna be fun. I'm gonna get rid of stupid loons. Everything's gonna be great. And I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that every Friday in New York that the schools are going vegan. I, I had no control of that. I, I didn't do that. You know, I blame the Obama administration. <laughs> Because Obama care, I don't give a fuck, quite frankly. I don't. You know? You can fucking schools. <laughs> you can fucking school. You, can, you guys can fucking school. Grab those little college girls by the pussy. <laughs> <laughs>